How's it going, everybody? I got the heat just cranked in here. It is... <laughs> it is about uh, almost 70 degrees. It's hot. Whew. How you guys doing today? I'm getting better. Uh, I, I Friends, I'm not going to lie. I, I'm done with my COVID, but I'm still like just dragging butt, friends. Going up and down stairs at work and stuff, like I find I'm short of breath. And uh, I'm going to keep pounding the content out, but I've been keeping it at a dull roar the last couple of weeks. Because it's like, I, I cut down a tree yesterday, friends, in the yard, like a 50-foot blue spruce. Normally, I would fall, limb, buck, split that, and haul it away. I falled it and limbed it and bucked it yesterday and walked away. I was so tired. So, I'll get better though, friends. Anyways, I want to jump back into the Flathead 45 motor. Uh, it's so cool that a lot of you guys are enjoying this. Uh, I love working on motors in general. I got a lot of comments. Tin Man, you working on a four-stroke? Friends, I've worked on more four-strokes than two-strokes. I've been pulling wrenches on cars my whole life. I started uh, in, in high school. Uh, I started pulling wrenches at a little, at a little tire shop. Uh, changing tires and, and doing oil changes and stuff like that and then right after high school um, I got a or they hired me full-time because I, I, I showed up and I guess I was a hard worker It's one thing friends. I've always been a hard worker. I love to work and if I'm working for you I'm gonna give you 126 percent every time. That's just how I am. So um, I've been pulling wrenches my whole life friends. I don't do it professionally anymore uh, I'm a sheet metal worker, but I love this stuff I've worked on a lot of Harleys uh, over the years, but there's been a gap, friends. There's been about a 10-year gap since I've done any of this stuff. I'm really enjoying it. I'm getting back into it. I started going through my old, I got all these old magazines and like the horse. Uh, I used to love the horse chop magazine and hot bike magazine and stuff like that. Uh, I have stacks and stacks and stacks of magazines and, and, uh, how-to books and stuff like that. So um, I really want to get this motor going. A couple of you have reached out in the comments with good ideas. A lot of you guys actually on how to unseize this thing. Um, it's cool. It's it's cool that there's so many people out there that are kind of on the same wavelength as me. We're just having fun, right? Uh, I'm probably not doing this the right way. I've never worked on a flathead, friends. Never. So uh, shovels. Yes, uh, you know, Evos, twin cams, stuff like that, but I've never worked on a flathead. So um, I have zero flathead experience. I understand all these work and kind of how to pull them down, but without YouTube friends, I'd be pretty stuck. So today's video, I want to I want to see if I can get these heads off at least, friends. And then we'll do another video on the timing chest. And I want to pull this thing down to the bare cases and start from scratch. Um... I got, a, I, I got a couple comments. I got to go back and look. One of you guys said you have parts for this. Uh, if that's you, thank you. I'll probably be hitting you up. Um, even this winter, if I can start gathering parts to get this motor together. And then, friends, maybe this winter or maybe in spring, depending on how our schedules work, I'd like to go back there. I am physically going to have to cut a roof off and get that bike out of there somehow. The doors won't open in the shop or anything, so I'm not exactly sure how we're gonna do that. Um, if the bike is completely taken apart, I might Johnny Cash it, friends, Cycle Billy Cadillac, and do it one piece at a time. I really want that bike out of there. I think there's one, possibly two more bikes in that shed too. Um, I'd like to rescue them, even if I don't do anything with them, I, I it would just be a shame for them to sit there. Um, so stay tuned friends. Uh, got a lot of comments about the 490 Yamaha that I have. Um, yeah, friends, I'm not sure that bike needs a complete teardown. Uh, it's got some shaft wear with the kickstart. Kickstart spring is broken, which is common on those. Um, I'd like to do the bottom end. The top end's kind of questionable. The, I mean, the piston's okay, but I have ridden that bike, friends. It does run. I decommissioned it because it runs way too lean and it's way too hard to start. So, and I think the starting issues might be an air leak, but it might also just be jetting. So that bike needs machine work in the head. Believe it or not, friends, those old big 
air-cooled two-strokes, they lowered the compression in them uh, for race bikes. Uh, uh, Google YZ490 uh, head mod, and you will get tons of, of write-ups and specs on how to do that. That's kind of where I base my compression theories and chainsaws. Yes, they need compression, but not too much compression. Those 490s suffered from too much compression. They were a bear to start. They ran hot and they ping, friends. That bike pings really bad in the mid-range. Then you get it on the pipe and it kind of cleans up, but it, it's, it needs a lot of work, friends. But with, with any luck, maybe, you know, this winter I'll start gathering parts. When COVID hit, friends... I couldn't get parts for that. Gasket sets and stuff were becoming unavailable, so I just kind of shelved it. It needs a carburetor. The slide's worn. So we'll see, friends. And if I decide not to do it, I'll, uh, I'll sell it or trade it to somebody. Maybe I'll trade it for Harley parts. Who knows? Anyhow, I got to undo the push rod tubes in this thing. They are seized. We're going to apply some heat and see if we can get them off one by one. Undo the push rods. Okay. Uh, these these have tappets that go up and down here and there should be two nuts that you undo We'll undo the push rods and then friends. I think I know how I'm gonna get these cylinders off pretty easily We know the pistons are hooped, so I'm not really worried about saving them Anyhow, I'm gonna bring you guys in and let's have a look Friends would you look at this bench? I got every <laughs> All hands on deck just like Friends, <laughs> whatever. Once you start getting the bench dirty like this, just keep going because it's like it needs a complete cleaning. I swept this bench off a couple times and it's like every time I work on it, I literally end up with a bench that was as messy as before. So, okay, let's get this going. The dude abides. <laughs> That's a funny lighter. Okay. So these actually screw on to these toppet blocks here. Okay, I'll just pause you guys till I get this hot. I was looking for this wrench. Okay, this thing's this is an antique. Um, it's an antique monkey wrench. Look at this. It's the perfect one. Okay, ready? There we go. I soaked all these in uh, transmission fluid and I added a little brake fluid to it. Thanks for the tip, guys. It actually worked pretty well. Um, I have literally soaked the whole bike. Okay. See, I needed a wrench as old. Actually, it's probably older. As old as the motor I'm working on. Okay. Now these, again, and a, a still scrunch. <laughs> Good times. I'm just having a blast. Oh, come on. I feel like my buddy George is here with me. George was a great man. He was, his mind friends, he was, uh, he was a very, very smart man. He taught me how to run a lathe, friends, actually. That's why I have a lathe, because of George. Um... Okay, well, that's about as high as that goes. Um, he was an expert in 45 flatheads. I wish I had him here to... Oh, that one's loose. Nice. I wish I had him here on this project to get me squared away. He knew he knew every torque spec for this motor. I used to talk to him about this bike. Um, I'll have to include in a video, I have a picture of this bike. I don't think it's him sitting on it. Again, friends, I can't really fit a wrench in here. I think there's probably a special wrench, so I've been using this. Um, I actually got a picture from a mutual friend of, of this bike sitting. Or a picture of... It might have been George sitting on the bike in like 1972, 73. So this bike had a name, friends. You want to know the name? And it's awesome. Dandelion. <laughs> that was this bike's name. That's so George. He was a good fella. I'm uh this is this this project is a hundred percent 
an ode to him. Okay, I'm gonna just keep going on here and uh, it might take a couple hours to get these front ones off. I don't know, but uh, we'll, I'll jump back in. I won't bore you guys with the details too much because I wanna get to seeing if I can get these cylinders off. Okay, so a couple of you mentioned this and I thought, yeah, that's the way to do it. Make a plate. I have this really heavy duty snap on puller, okay? Uh, I don't have the end for it though. I got this at an estate sale or something, but here, I'm gonna go like this, okay? Oh, and for the record, the, uh, the ATF fluid did not go through, so. That's because I figured you guys are probably gonna wanna know that. Okay, well, that's not gonna work that way. So let's go this way. I'm gonna be gentle, friends. Um, that way we don't pull any threads. I can get these reboard, for sure I can. Okay, let's tighten these right down. What size these are? Right here? Yeah, right there. Okay. What do you guys think? You guys think this is gonna work? Yeah, I do everything in real time. You guys just watch me. I film a lot of my life and uh, whatever I'm doing in the shop is what we do on YouTube. People ask me that all the time. How do you come up with ideas? It's like, I don't. <laughs> I just do whatever. Oh, and it's the same size. Okay. Oh, that's... Oh, that's, uh, that's stuck, friends. That's stuck real bad. Okay, I just got to think about this for a minute before I go like nutty. I guess I could try and heat that jug up. Give me a few minutes here. Okay, well, I didn't get it to budge there. We got like an inch of thread holding this thing on. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to try and move this over. And try and push it in a different spot. I'm kind of limited though because the exhaust valves are stuck open and they don't move anymore because they're seized so they're not even this one the front one's not even touching so again anything anything of any value in life takes patience and time okay I've been being real gentle with this. I don't want to destroy this motor. Just making sure that it's not bottoming out yet. That is stuck. My idea is to break it free and push the piston down, pull the cylinder up while pushing the piston down. I, <laughs> again though, I can't push this piston down and push, you know, this one up because it's so seized. There'd be no way, There's this, this scale is so thick in here, there'd be no way for me to get it moving. So, I might try putting the impact on here. Because I almost need to bolt this engine down to the to the workbench, friends. And yeah, you know, I'm gonna keep going and see if we can get this off. Okay, friends, I hope you can see this. I got my impact here. It's starting to push the cylinder off, and it's actually turning the whole assembly. Watch this. I don't know if you guys can see. Okay. as far as this impact will go the cylinder is actually lifting up here can you see that little gap in there right here so it's moving whether yeah see there's a gap okay i'm gonna try and do the back one now 
because again, this one's also seized. So yeah, this thing's stuck, friends. I'm probably gonna have to apply just a whole whack of heat. I might not have enough heat in this shop to do this, but we'll try. Well, it's about an hour and a half later, friends, and uh, I actually got the cylinder to move. There's a sixteenth of an inch gap. It started coming up. Um, I think the piston moved that about about that same amount, friends. And then, <laughs> pop goes the weasel. It is unfortunate, but let's be honest, guys. You, a lot of you guys spotted it. Um, this motor's trashed. At least the top end is. Um, these, I, I applied tons of heat to this thing. It was just smoking. And uh, it started to move. It started to move. I started giving it a ratchet. And then, boom, it popped. So, I, <laughs> I expected this thing to need heads. Also, one ear broke off while I was doing that. So, the rear head... Is slightly movable now, but same thing, friends. It's just this thing's just absolutely rotten inside. So there's a couple ideas I have. Because again, if I need cylinders and pistons, I need cylinders and pistons and valves. I mean, these valves are shot. These cylinders could have been bored. Doesn't look like there's a sleeve in here, but now it's this is toast. So unfortunately. But well, what can you do, right? These cylinders, normally you just give them a light tap to break the seal and slide them off. When they're this rotten, it, it's uh, it's a tough deal. So, kind of sucks. Like, look, friends, this cylinder is actually loose now. Like, I should be able to pull this off by hand. So, what am I going to do? Well, now I know that this thing is way beyond where we want it to be repair-wise. Trying to save the cylinders now. Seems like uh, a silly effort. So, what I'm probably going to do, I'm not going to do this today, but what I'll probably do is I'll start drilling out this piston along the cylinder wall to relieve the tension on it, right? Because everything's swollen up and grabbing. Like, you guys look, I already put a wire brush in this. This cylinder wall is like 40 grit sandpaper, so think the cylinder wall is grabbing the piston to the point that we broke this off so unfortunately so that's what i'm probably going to end up doing um i applied so much heat it was actually bubbling around the piston so i thought okay <laughs> we we're making headroom here you know and uh the cylinder started moving and then uh that was it i heard Kachink, and that was the end of that. Kachinka, Kachanka, good day to you, sir. It's too bad, but that's what happens when things sit rotten, rusting for years. So I think, friends, we're going to call her quits for today. And uh, <laughs> the saga of the 45 flathead continues. I'm going to earn this motor, okay? Um... I'm going to earn the right to ride this thing. And if I got to work on it lots, then that's the way it's going to be. Kind of sad, but it is what it is. Um, again, friends, this thing might be too far gone. Like I notice the, uh, the tappets are all seized. So I can't get the tappet blocks off until I take the top end off. I can't split this thing. The only way I could split this thing, friends, and I might end up doing that, but I don't know if that's going to get me. I would have to literally break off the tabs on one side and then take all the nuts and bolts off and split the cases. Then I would have a loose crank and cylinders. But again, if I can't get at the wrist pins, which I can't, I can't take this crank apart anyways. So, um, again, we'll just keep doing what we're doing. And if this thing becomes a lamp, at least I have the piece, right? That sucks. Oh, well. 
we don't hide nothing on this channel, all right, guys? It's This is reality, and when you're working on old stuff, I mean, this thing's, this motor is like 80 years old on the button, so, and it's been sitting outside. Whether that was sand in there, I don't know. A lot of you guys asked, is that sand? Was that sand? This was sitting outside, I believe, for five or six years in an area locally that is very sandy. So, and we get a lot of wind here. I could see sand blowing into the exhaust port here. And if the, uh, if the exhaust port is open, which this one is and that one is, right? You guys see that there. The sand could blow up and then fill the cylinders, so... Oh, it is what it is, friends. I thought we were making headway. This thing was starting to move up. The other one's all the way at the bottom of the bore, and it's even worse than this one. So, oh well, it is what it is. Okay, friends, well, you win some, you lose some. Um, maybe using that puller wasn't the best idea, but honestly, at this point, these cylinders are so trashed. Like, they really are, friends. They're in horrible shape. Yes, you could have them bored and all that. Uh, I've talked to a few guys that work on these and they were saying to me, it's not worth my time to bore sleeve and put new valves in and everything in old rusty cylinders like this because you can still find them. Uh, good cylinders are still available. Repo cylinders are available. So um, it is a shame though. I really, really wanted this thing to be complete the way it was. Again, though, you win some, you lose some, right, friends? Um, I don't know. I'll probably shelf this thing for a little while, get back to the saw work. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going to go from here. I'll talk to my brother, who's a genius when it comes to pulling wrenches. And uh, maybe we'll have to take this to his shop or uh, to his work, even, where they got all kinds of heavy-duty equipment. Maybe we can get this top end off. So... This cylinder's trashed for sure. This one, like this thing's still hot, friends, and I haven't heated it for like half an hour, so. Um, but yeah, that piston in there is trashed. Like, absolutely trashed, so. Oh, well. Another day in the saw shop, or the Harley shop, whatever you want to call it. Thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.